Hey, this is Presh Walker. Start with semicircle AB and flip it upside down so that semicircle CD is tangent to semicircle AB. The two semicircles are also positioned such that the line through AB is tangent to the semicircle CD and the line through CD is exactly tangent to the semicircle AB. If each semicircle has a diameter equal to 2, what is the length of AD equal to? Write your answer in the form of the square root of x plus the square root of y, where x and y are whole numbers greater than or equal to 1, and x is less than y. A version of this problem was asked in a mathematical Olympiad qualifying test in the Philippines. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. Let's review the following geometric concept. If two circles are tangent, their centers and the tangent point are collinear. Suppose we have circles A and B that are tangent. Let T be the tangent point. Draw the line through T. By the given information, AT is perpendicular to the tangent line, and BT is also perpendicular to the tangent line. Therefore, ATB is a straight line segment. This is true for both externally and internally tangent circles. So now let's solve the problem. Let's construct the center of each semicircle and the tangent point. By the principle we just showed, these three points will be on a straight line segment. Now, construct the following tangent point of semicircle AB to the line going through CD. Let's drop this perpendicular, which is also a radius of the semicircle AB. Now, each semicircle has a diameter that's equal to 2, which is equal to 1 plus 1. So each semicircle has a radius that's equal to 1. So let's focus on this right triangle. The shorter leg will be equal to 1, so the hypotenuse will be equal to 1 plus 1. So the hypotenuse will be equal to 2. We thus have a 30-60-90 special right triangle. So we know that the longer leg will be equal to the square root of 3, but if you didn't recall that fact, you could also figure it out using our favorite right triangle theorem. It'll be equal to the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 3. So now let's go back to our original diagram. From the point A, construct a perpendicular to the line going through CD. This will also have a length that's equal to 1. We also have a length that's equal to 1 here because it's equal to a radius of the semicircle AB. Let's now construct a right triangle where AD is the hypotenuse. We know that the shorter leg is equal to 1, and the longer leg is equal to 2 plus the square root of 3. So we can figure out the length of AD. It'll be equal to the square root of the quantity 2 plus the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared. We now just need to simplify this. So first we'll expand the binomial, then we'll group like terms. So we're almost there. We just need to write this in terms of the form square root of x plus the square root of y. To do that, we'll square both sides. We'll get rid of the square root on the left-hand side, so it's equal to 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. We then will expand the right side. Now since x and y are positive whole numbers greater than or equal to 1, we can write the square root of x times the square root of y is equal to the square root of x times y. So now let's continue our simplification. We want to make the left-hand side in the same form as the right-hand side. So let's do a little trick. We'll rewrite 4 as equal to 2 times 2. Then 2 is equal to the square root of 4. From here, the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 12. So now both sides of this equation have the same form, so we can equate like terms. So we will equate 8 with x plus y. That gives us one equation. 
And then we'll equate two times the square root of xy with two times the square root of 12, meaning 12 is equal to x times y. So we have a system of two equations. In the left-hand side, we'll solve for y. 8 minus x is equal to y. We substitute that into the second equation, so we get 12 is equal to x multiplied by the quantity 8 minus x. We'll then distribute the x term. We now have a quadratic equation. x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. We can factor this rather easily. It'll be factored into the linear terms of x minus 2 and x minus 6. We thus have two solutions, x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 6. We can solve for y by substituting into the equation y is equal to 8 minus x. This yields y is equal to 6 and y is equal to 2. But recall we want x to be less than y, so we'll just take the solution x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6. From here, we just go back to our nested radical and we substitute in. The square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of y, where x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6. So this is equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, and that's approximately equal to 3.86, and that's the answer. What an interesting problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.